Hi, it's Miss Patty. Are you ready for happy and you know it? I'm happy. Are you happy? All right, let's sing the song. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, jump up and down. <laughs> Can you jump? It's hard for me to do it here. If you're happy and you know it, jump up and down. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, jump up and down. If you're happy and you know it, twirl around. If you're happy and you know it, twirl around. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, twirl around. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. <laughs> you might do that differently. We can change it lots of times. But I thought today I'd just do all the happy verses because I feel really happy today. We have a really nice story. I love the story about Jesus in the Bible. Let me get this here a little bit closer for you. I reach over here to get my characters. One day, some friends of Jesus came to the door, and they said, I think I forgot the beginning part of the story. Let me start with the beginning part of the story. Jesus had made many sick people well. All day long, Jesus had been telling people about God's love, and when it was bedtime, he went to stay at the house of a friend. And he went to sleep, right? Because he was a man, just like we're people. And he went to sleep so he could get rested. And in the morning, some of the people came to the door. They were looking for him. And they said, we want to see Jesus. And his friends, they probably called him by name, but the friend where he was staying, they all went to look for him. Guess what? Jesus wasn't there. Well... They didn't know where he could have gone. They looked a lot of different places for him. And on our sheet today, we have a maze about a lot of different places they might have looked for Jesus. We'll do our sheet in a little while. And they called to him, probably, Jesus, where are you? So they looked and they started down the road and finally they found him. Jesus was in a quiet place. What do you think he was doing in that quiet place? If you said praying, you're right. Jesus liked to pray. What was he doing when he was praying? Why did he pray? He was talking to God the Father. When we pray, we're talking to God the Father. And that's what Jesus was doing. He was praying. He was talking to God, his Father in heaven. Jesus' friends knew that he liked to pray because they had seen him do it many, many times. So his friends asked him, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? And Jesus said, I will. I will teach you to pray. So the friends all gathered around Jesus. When you pray, pray like this. And you can say this with me. I'll say a little bit and then you say it after me. Our Father who is in heaven, we love and respect your name. Did you say that after me? Let me try it this way. Our Father who is in heaven, our Father who is in heaven, we love and respect your name. 
We love and respect your name. When I go like this, that's your chance to say the prayer with me. We want you to be king over us. We want you to be king over us. Give us what we need today. Forgive the things we do wrong. We forgive everyone who has done wrong to us. We forgive everyone who has done wrong to us. Please protect us. Help us to do right. Please protect us. Help us to do right. You are the king. You can do anything. Amen. Say that part. You are the king. You can do anything. Amen. What does amen mean? We've talked about this in Sunday school, but it's been a long time. It means I agree with you. It means so be it. We are all in agreement. That's the way it should be. Amen. Sometimes people say amen. Amen or amen. Either one is okay. So Jesus also told them that when they talk to God, they should talk just like they're talking to their father or their daddy who loves them very much. That's how they should talk to God. And they said to ask God the Father for what they need each day. Jesus said to ask God to forgive them for the things that are wrong and that they should do and forgive other people. They should try and do the things God wants and they should forgive other people if they do wrong things. He said they should also ask God to help them to do right things. And one time, I made a prayer sheet up for kids and I called it the daily prayer and when I did that I was thinking about this prayer in the Bible that Jesus taught them and so it says Heavenly Father hallowed be your name so that's like when he it says we love and respect your name hallowed be your name it says thank you for our food our homes and our families Thank you for, because I always like to start my prayers thanking God because he gives me everything, everything I have. Thank you for letting me teach Sunday school. Thank you for giving me this beautiful earth to live in. Thank you for so much food and thank you for my family and my friends. Thank you that I have a warm house to stay in. Thank you that I have good health. There are so many things I can be thankful for. Thank you for my family. And then this box says, please help me to do good and forgive me when I make mistakes. Help me to be kind, loving, and forgiving when others around me make mistakes. And then I like to tell God if I've made a mistake. So I say, I am sorry. I, and maybe I did something that wasn't right. I am sorry that I wasn't kind to somebody or I am sorry that I haven't read the Bible as much lately or I am sorry that I didn't pray to you all day yesterday whatever I'm sorry for I can say that to God and then I like to also say and I'm going to try to do better I'm going to not do that again I'm going to try to do better because just saying I'm sorry doesn't feel like quite enough to me for God. And then the next box down here says, please bless my family and my friends. Please bless. And then you can ask anybody you want. So I know somebody who's sick right now. And I can say, please bless Jenny's grandma, Kathy. And please bless Jenny, who is helping her grandma. And please bless Jenny's kids so that they're not missing their mom too much and help Jenny to travel home safely. If it is your will, I pray for, and that's where I could say, Jenny to travel home quickly and safely. Anything I want to pray for, I can put down here. And then I say, thank you, Lord, amen. And you can write your name down here. So I'm gonna hold this up here in case your moms or dads want to write any of that down for you. And when you start coming back to Sunday school 
instead of just watching it on TV, you can get one of these sheets from me. That's a good way to pray. It's kind of like just the way God taught us how to pray. So here's our sheet. I'm going to pull this a little bit closer here so you can see it a little bit better. So here's the friends, and there's the house where Jesus might have been staying, and they went looking for him. And on this sheet, we're supposed to figure out where did they go. So maybe they went down here to this other house, but no, nope, Jesus wasn't there. Maybe they walked up here to the town, or maybe they went down here to the water. Jesus was often by the water. Jesus, where are you? Are you with the sheep? Where's Jesus? Oh, look, here's a quiet place where Jesus is. And what is he doing there? In our picture, it shows him standing up, doesn't it? in our flannel board story. I think it shows him standing up because he was teaching. Lots of times when we're teaching, we might stand. But when we're praying, lots of times we do what Jesus is doing in this picture. Sometimes we stand. Lots of times we bow down a little bit, maybe on our knees. Sometimes we bow our heads. We do that because we want God to know how much we respect him, that we honor him and we respect him. He's the creator of everything. We're not equal to God. We don't stand and be equal to God. We bow our heads and we respect God or we kneel. But when Jesus in this picture is standing, it's probably because he was teaching those people. Okay, here's a fun one. This is about patterns. Can you see the patterns? Here's our sticker page. So this has a man, a cat, a teddy bear, an apple, an ice cream cone, and then it has a kitty cat that says, nice job. And it has hands that say, I can talk to God. And they're praying hands. So here's a pattern. It goes, girl, teddy bear, boy. Girl, something goes here, boy. Can you find that pattern? Let's try it again. Girl, teddy bear, boy. Girl, mm, boy. What goes right there? Here's our stickers. I think it's the teddy bear. Let's see if we put the teddy bear if we have the same pattern. Girl, teddy bear, boy. Girl, teddy bear, boy. Yeah, that's the same pattern, isn't it? Okay, let's try this one. Here's doggy ice cream rider. Doggy something. Doggy ice cream rider. Doggy, what comes after the doggy? Here's our sticker sheet. Ice cream. Doggy ice cream rider. Doggy ice cream. And if we had another one of those, that would be next, wouldn't it? Instead, there's a new rider over here call this bike apple bike something bike what do you think on our stickers is going to go there bike apple bike it's the apple isn't it let's try it bike apple bike apple bike yeah that worked okay here's cat man dog Something, dog, whoops, <laughs> I didn't get that one right. Let's try it again. Cat, man, dog, mm -hmm. man, dog. What's going to go right before the man? Cat, man, dog. 
Here's our stickers. I almost could hear you right through the sound there. It's the cat, isn't it? Cat man dog, cat man dog. Here we've got, I think this one's a little bit harder. It goes, mommy, man, man. Mommy, and here's the last sticker we have left. Man. Maybe he's a daddy, but I'm just calling him a man. Because he doesn't have any kids in the picture with him. Mommy, daddy, daddy, mommy, daddy. All right. And this says, nice job. I think we got them all right. We can have a nice job sticker. Oops, that one's about to fall off. don't have a family sheet for you today, but I do have a book. I think you might like this book. This book is called Learning About the Bible. And I know you already know some things about the Bible. What is the Bible? The Bible is the book of our Christian faith, the Christian scriptures. Not all Bibles look the same. Some are small and others are big. Some have pictures. Others only have words. Some look worn out because they are read so often. Others are kept very safe and special, but are hardly read. This book tells you more about the Bible and what we believe about it. What is the Bible? The Bible is a collection of more than 60 very old books. The books were all written a long time ago in the languages of long ago. And it is these books that make up the Bible. Most Bibles you will see are translations. That's a big word. Can you say that word? Translations. That's a big word. That means the words are in the language that we speak. So we speak English. But when the Bibles were written, they weren't written in English. So they had to change them into English so we could read them. And that's the translation when they change them. In other countries, people have translations in their languages. So we have the Bible in English, but people who are in Japan probably have it in Japanese. Some scholars have Bibles in the old language. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Sometimes in real big church, when one of the pastors is talking, I've heard Pastor Eric say sometimes, the word that they use in this scripture is, and he'll say the Greek word, and he'll say, and in Greece, what that word really means is, and he explains it a little bit better, a little bit more, because the translation maybe didn't exactly use the perfect word. So he knows enough about Greek that he can look things up in that language. We believe that the words of the Bible are very special. That was my bookmark. It came falling out. Why do some Bibles have pictures? Many Bibles these days have pictures in them. The pictures are much more modern than words. They have been added for all sorts of reasons. Pictures help us find interesting stories to read. Pictures help us imagine what the events looked like. Pictures make the Bible more enjoyable for some of us who find it harder to read words. We make the Bible easy for everyone to enjoy and use. I'm not going to read this whole book because it's kind of long. I'm just going to read um, up to number three. We'll stop after number three. There are all kinds of children's Bibles. Some are translations of all the Bible, but the words are specially chosen, so they're easy for kids. You remember that sometimes I've used the Bible that has uh, the pictures that kind of look like comic books. That's a children's Bible. It's called the Action Bible. 
Many are retellings of the most memorable stories, and most have pictures with lots to look at. They help children begin to learn what is in the Bible. We want children to know and enjoy the Bible. I think that's, yep, that's as far as I'm going today. Maybe we'll read some more about the Bible next time. I'll put my bookmark back in here so I know where to start it. Who do you think's our puppet today? Do you have any idea? Are you guessing? It's me, Callie. I'm the puppet today. Meowsing. What? Meowsing. Good to see you, Callie, but what did you say? Meowsing. Have you ever heard that, kids? Hmm. Repeat after me. Meow. Can you sing meow? Meow. Okay, I think they did it. Now say zing. <laughs> zing. Now put it together. Meow zing. <laughs> I never heard that word before, did you? Well, it's a good word, and it sounds like you really like it. I do, I do. I do it when I'm happy. But what does meowsing mean? Well, it's kind of like amazing with a kitty cat accent. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. Did you have something amazing that happened to you? Yes, I did. I was thirsty, and I wanted to have some milk to drink. Have you had milk before? <laughs> yes, I have. Boys and girls, have you had milk before? I think they have too. I have too, and it's very good. It's one of my favorite things. I like cans of tuna and smelly shoes and crinkly paper and flashlights, beams. Aren't those wonderful things? <laughs> yes, I've seen kitty cats that like all of those things. But you were telling me why you're happy today and what was a mousing? <laughs> what was meowsing? Hmm. Oh, yes. Well, I wanted to have milk, so I meowed like this. Meow! And my person poured some milk in a bowl. Oh, that was nice. Did your person give it to you? No. She was eating cereal in the bowl with milk. So I sat and I watched and said, Meow! Really nicely. And I tilted my head this way. And then I tilted my head that way, and I said, meow, meow. <laughs> did she understand? Yeah, she did. She gave me some milk. She said, you must be thirsty. Well, that is meowsing, isn't it? I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and that makes me happy. Hmm. That sounds like your person really cares about you. Yeah, because I'm cute. <laughs> you are cute, but I think your person cares about you because she's a good person. And you can meow, and she knows what to give you. She knows how to give you what you need. Yep, meowsing. You know what? That's kind of like the way God is for us. We can pray to God about something we need, and God loves us, and he wants to take care of us. He listens when we pray, and he'll give us what we need. He doesn't always give us what we ask for, but he'll give us what we need. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> Bye. I got to go get some more milk. <laughs> Goodbye, Callie. Well, that's about it for today in Sunday School. I hope you have a really good week. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye for now.